Hey everyone, Chris with the Kentucky Woodsman Channel. We're back with another episode of the uh, Woodsman University that we've been talking about doing. And this time I'm going to cover the basics of building a quick and dirty fire. Now, there's probably a million different ways to start a fire and build a fire. And the way I'm going to show you is just very simple to the point. And we're not going to use a fire steel. We're not going to use anything but just a lighter to start it. Nothing fancy this time around. We basically just want to make like a survival fire. Imagine you're someone who's out in the woods, who's lost. You can't find your way out. You know you're going to have to spend the night. It's supposed to get cold tonight. And you need to build a fire. You need something to stay warm. So with that in mind, we're going to go through the process of building a quick and dirty survival fire. Now the first thing I want to say is this right here. If you're an old pro at building fires, then you're probably watching the wrong video, just to be honest with you. Because this is a very basic and beginner's video. This is for someone who maybe is just tuning into YouTube and wanting to learn the process of building a fire. Maybe they're new to bushcraft, maybe they're new to camping, maybe they're new to hiking, anything of the such. So, this is not for the experienced woodsman. Because I'm sure if you are an experienced woodsman, you already know how to build a fire. All right, it takes three basic things to have a fire. And that's called a fire triangle. You have to have heat, you have to have fuel, and you have to have air. There's three, also three types of uh, fuel that you can use on a fire. Your most basic, and the one that actually has the highest combustion rate burns the easiest is your tinder. Then you have your kindling and then you have your fuel. Now kindling is stuff like small sticks and twigs or maybe a, a piece of firewood, a fire log that you've split up into smaller pieces. Your fuel, this would actually still be considered kindling, but your fuel is going to be bigger stuff. It's going to be this size or bigger and it's going to be what's going to sustain the fire. Your tinder is going to start the fire, your kindling is going to keep it burning long enough to start the fuel, and then your fuel is going to sustain the fire. So that's the three things, the three types of fuel you'll need for a fire. And like I said, to actually have a fire, you have to have a heat source, which we have in our lighter. You have to have air, which we have all around us. But you also, when you're building your fire, you have to leave it kind of fluffed up. It can't be compressed down. You can't push it down and expect it to light. And two, you have to have your, or three, you have to have your fuel, which is your wood, and your tinder, and your kindling, and all, just everything. Everything that you're going to burn is your fuel. So first off, let's find us some, let's find us some tinder, and that's the first thing we're going to need. Now, obviously, you're going to look, need to look for tinder. It's been raining here quite a bit, so likely everything on the ground is going to be wet. So as far as tinder goes, I'm gonna to wanna to look in places where it's had a chance to dry out, where it's had air, where it's had the ability to air dry and get good and dry. So like one place I'll look is here at the off-grid cabin, I have this table, which is made of mesh. You're not gonna have this in most situations, but you know, you might find it in the fork of a tree or something like that. This is all very good dry leaves. They should burn. First off, you want to scratch out a place so you don't start a forest fire. Put your tinder pile down. We're going to get more. Get all we can. Okay, as you can see, I've got a little pile of leaves going here. Now, something else I like to do whenever I'm trying to start a fire in material that I know is wet. So I like to make like a feather stick or something along that line. Something I know is going to, uh, once it starts burning, it's going to burn for a little while. It's going to give my kindling a chance to uh, get caught up and start burning. Which once the kindling gets starts burning, once it starts burning, then your fuel will start burning right after that. So uh, that's very important. And one other thing I would like to say at this point is don't get in too big of a hurry. Do not get in too big of a hurry. That will destroy your chances of getting a fire started 
it needs to be something just you go at a leisurely pace take your time don't stress about it just uh, go slow and methodical and everything will work itself out while I was over there I came across uh, some sassafras tweaks and uh, that is one thing that I have found will just about ensure your success of building a fire is if you can find lots of sassafras twigs, dried sassafras twigs. They burn great, they burn fast, they burn hot. They will get a fire started very quickly. But as I said, I like to make some shavings. You can do feather sticks or you can just do small ribbons. This is all very good for getting a fire going. Shave it off in here. A bunch of uh, little ribbons like that works great. All right. Now one thing to keep in mind: if you have to spend the night in the woods and you're not expecting it, or maybe, just maybe, you've never spent the night in the woods and uh, you find yourself stuck, you find yourself lost. Something to keep in mind is a fire will do many things for you. A lot of you have heard me tell this, or tell the story this way of how I believe a, what a fire does for you. One, it provides you a friend. It provides you something to work with, something to keep you company. It gives you something to do. You, continuously feeding the fire, keeping the fire going. And uh, three, it keeps you warm, obviously. You can cook food over it, you can stay warm by it. And one that a lot of people don't think about and don't laugh because it's the truth, and if you're willing to admit it, you'll know it's the truth, it keeps the wood boogers away. You may ask, what's a wood booger? Well, if you're from my part of the Appalachians, you know what a wood booger is. That would be the Bigfoots and Sasquatches and all that, which if they truly existed, it'd be good to keep them away. The second thing is, is it keeps your mind from wondering. It keeps your mind from worrying about that sound that's over in the weeds. You know, and it also it does provide an amount of protection. If you've got, you know, uh, predators in the area, the fire will keep them away. It'll keep them at bay. It'll also provide a way of search and rescue to find you at night if they're looking for you. They'll see your fire and go straight to your fire. So keep all this in mind. All right, like I said, this is a quick and dirty fire. We have to have fuel, we have to have heat, and we have to have a heat source and we have to have air. So we've got our heat source right here. We've got our fuel. We have to make sure it gets plenty of air, so we're not going to compress it down. We're going to put these small twigs, just going to situate them to where they don't really compress our tender pile down. Basically just want it to just be there to be in contact with the fire. So here we go. We'll see how dry our leaves were. Of course, the smoke wants to choke you out, as always. Hopefully you can see this. All right, as you can see, our tender pile has taken off. That's our dry leaves. 
Now our uh, kindling is starting to burn. As soon as our kindling starts burning, we can actually add the fuel to it. We'll give it a chance to start going. See, it started, and this literally is all it takes to have a big roaring fire by the time the temperatures drop tonight after it turns dark, and you've got a good heat source to stay warm by. You've got an emergency signal if the search and rescue is out looking for you. You've got something, as I said, to keep the wood boogers away. You've got something to cook a meal if you find some food, if you find some type of meat source that needs to be cooked. You've got everything you need right here in this little fire. If you've never built a fire or you don't know how to build a fire, this may save someone's life. I'm not saying I'm perfect at it because I'm not. There's been many a times my son and I have been in competitions and he's beat, beat me in building fires. It happens. It's just the way it is. You will not always be successful, but you need to practice as much as you can so that you can be successful as much as possible. So when you have the need for it, you can get it started. Folks, this has been the Woodsman University, Episode 2. Hopefully you've learned something and hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for sticking by. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you on Down the Trail.